Alrighty, in this Photoshop 101 video, we're going to go over the layer adjustments that you can do for layers. This video is going to be a little bit longer because there's a lot to cover in this section, uh, but just adjustment layers are extremely important. Um, to get to adjustment layers, you can click on this little half circle down here at the bottom with the drop down arrow. Uh, if you uh, click on that, it's going to open up a little panel for you. We've already gone over these top three in a previous video. These are going to be fill layers, not adjustment layers. Um, so fill a solid color or a gradient or a pattern. Um, if you haven't seen that video, I suggest going back to it just to kind of take a look at it. But these are three things that are extremely straightforward. All right. So diving into adjustment layers, we're going to look at the top to the bottom. We're going to go brightness and contrast. So to add an adjustment layer, all you do is you click on that little drop down menu with the half circle. Um, and then you click on the layer that you, the adjustment layer that you want to add. So we'll add brightness and contrast, and it does exactly what it says. When you click on that layer, it's going to pop open the properties tab, um, and then from there you can drag these sliders to adjust the different properties. So you can adjust the brightness and the contrast of uh, the layer or layers that you have selected. Now, if you want to pinpoint just one single layer, Right now we have brightness and contrast and it's the very top layer. So anytime we adjust this, it's going to adjust every layer that's underneath it. If we wanted to only adjust the cheetah print layer, what we're gonna do is we're going to create a clipping mask like we learned in the last video. Um, so we're gonna drag the brightness uh, down so that it is above the layer we want to adjust and only that layer. So now our tan uh, linen rectangle is not going to get adjusted and our adjustment uh, layers text is not going to get adjusted at all. It's only going to adjust this. But say that we had something else below it. What we do is we would right click and we would just create clipping mask. The clipping mask is going to have this little drop down arrow showing us that it's only affecting that layer. Um, so then we can go in here and we can freely adjust the brightness and the contrast of that to uh, only affect the cheetah print. So brightness and contrast is pretty good. It's useful um, in lightening things up. Uh, the next one we're gonna jump into is gonna be levels. Um, levels and curves. Curves and levels are almost the exact same thing. Um, I, I like to use levels. It makes things a little bit easier. Um, to create a clipping mask from the properties panel, you can click on this little square with a drop down arrow and it will clip the layer that you have below it. So we've got it clipping to the cheetah print. Um, we'll open properties back up. What levels allows you to do is to adjust the, um, the shadows, the midtones, and the light areas of that specific layer. So if I were to drag this little arrow over it's going to darken all of those dark tones because we're getting those things closer together so it's kind of smushing the colors together uh, or the the shadows the, the mid tones and the highlights same goes with if you were to drag uh, the lightness over um, it's going to brighten everything up and then <coughs> dragging the mid tones uh, back and forth either way um, this works very similarly to what the, the last one did the um, brightness and contrast it just gives you a little bit more control everything in this section brightness contrast levels curves and exposure all do very similar things um, the best one out of these four is going to be levels it's going to be the one that i i use the most and you'll find it is the easiest to help pinpoint you know to modify and change those things for you uh, so moving on we will go just touch on uh, curves briefly. Curves is the same deal except for you get to create curves. You can click on the little diagram here and move it. It's not as precise as what you see with uh, levels, but you can add you know more to it. So if you wanted to bring out and create like a, a weird little S curve to accentuate accentuate uh, different you know midtones in there you can. It's it's a little bit more complex. It's something that I don't use a whole lot because I don't have the need to make wonky uh, colors and things like this in any of the designs that I'm doing. Uh, so that's the curves for you. I don't use it really at all. Um, and then exposure. Exposure is kind of the same deal. Uh, you can 
jack the exposure up or lower it down. Um, it's lower in the back, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click this little square to clip it to just that cheetah print. Um, same thing as the last two things, and then you can set the offset um, and then gamma correction. But I don't ever use exposure. Uh, it's not the easiest or best way to do it. We'll go ahead and delete that and move on to the next little section. Vibrance. Vibrance is uh, exactly what it sounds like. We'll go ahead and click this so it'll clip just to the cheetah print layer. Um, and you can make things more vibrant or more dull. So you, you bring it up, it's gonna take the orange in there and it's gonna make it a lot more vibrant. Uh, if you were to drag it down, it's gonna make it look more dull. So you're losing those colors. Um, and then if you mess with the saturation, if you bring the saturation all the way down, it's going to completely desaturate the image. It's going to turn it to a uh, grayscale. Um, and then if you jack that saturation up, it's going to give you these really saturated oranges and yellows and stuff that are in the, the actual color here of the image. Um, so this is something that you can definitely mess around with with vibrance. Um, it works really good on like photos and things like that if you wanted just to brighten up a photo. Uh, it's not a bad way to do it. Uh, so Vibrance is a, is a pretty good tool. Uh, <coughs> hue and Saturation is our next one, and this is the most important one. I live in this. Um, when you want to make the same design or you want to make the same thing, but you want it to be you know, five different potential colors, um, this is where you're going to be able to do that, is Hue and Saturation. Yeah. So when you open up, it's going to give you this default up here. Um, you can mess with the drop down if you want to change the presets. I leave mine at uh, default and I leave mine at master because it changes all of the colors. You can select and pinpoint specific colors to change and modify if you wanted to. Um, I don't do that, I just leave it at master. Now, when you want to change the entire color of something, you're going to want to click on this colorize box. What colorize is going to do is it's going to allow you when you drag this hue slider, the top one, over a certain color, it will change the whole color of that image to uh, that color. Um, so we want to go say to like a light blue turquoisey color. Um, we'll go here in the middle of the slider. You can adjust the saturation. So like we talked about in the last one, saturation, the lower you go, the more grayscale it's going to turn. And then the higher saturation you go, it's going to pack that color and it's going to saturate it. And then lightness and darkness obviously changes the lightness of something and the darkness of something. Um, so with lightness and darkness, you can achieve the darker colors of that variation. So say you wanted to get a teal color, you just drop that darkness down, uh, the lightness down into the black, and you, know, you can modify and change uh, the saturation of something. So I tend to keep lightness um, far, like you know, from the edges towards the middle, you know, zero to maybe negative thirty, and then I don't really go positive because when you go positive, it, it eliminates a lot of the detail because it's taking those dark tones like the blacks and stuff that we want out and lightening them up. Um, so I don't I don't mess with lightness a whole lot. A whole, a whole lot but rather saturation because you can still achieve that potential color by dropping the saturation down um, to get like a, a teal color there you can see you know there's there's a lot of cool fun aspects inside human saturation and it's probably the one that you will use the most because it allows you to instantly change the color of something uh, to a different color so someone says oh, I want this in pink well you can go open up hue and saturation and click on pink and then adjust your saturation however you want to and your lightness you know darkness however you want to and then you can easily easily achieve uh, that pink color that they were asking for in just a few clicks so hue and saturation the most important uh, adjustment layer so we'll go ahead and delete that and we'll open up our next one which is color balance Color balance I don't use at all. Um, you can change the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights, uh, and then you can drag these sliders over, and it's going to change the colors very similarly to how um, 
human saturation did it except for you kind of get wonky weird colors when you're adjusting these things it's not as smooth as a transition as just using human saturation so I don't use color balance ever really uh, the designs that I do um, black and white also extremely straightforward uh, when you click it it turns everything to a grayscale you can then adjust in here uh, the colors of the base layer so all of the reds that were in that base uh, cheetah print layer we can make them either more light or we can make them more dark so you can adjust the color of something black and white is really cool I like to use it a lot um, you know you can get a lot of crazy cool textures out of it um, it's really good for making brushes and I'll do uh, a video on that on how to, to make brushes later on um, but yeah changing uh, changing things to black and white and using the slider is a, not a bad option moving on we're gonna go to uh, photo filter I don't ever use photo filter it's very similar to what uh, like Instagram filters would be uh, you can click on <coughs> you know this little drop down menu and then add in uh, a different filter color it's gonna filter you know if we put it up on top it'll filter our entire layer to give it kind of like that that color overlay it's not uh, it's not a great tool I don't use it for anything there's better ways to filter something or add um, a filter layer photo layer over the top of it uh, channel mixer <coughs> I don't ever use the channel mixer um, channel mixer allows you to just drastically mess with colors um, using the uh, we'll go ahead and create a clipping mask here but using the human saturation it, to me is a better way this will allow you to change the colors of blacks though so say we wanted those black spots to be red um, we can drop that down or I wanted them to be blue rather because we're on the blue output channel um, we'll drop the reds down to blue and then we can drag the slider around and just change the black spots whereas in like uh, hue and saturation we wouldn't have been able to just change those black spots so it does have some of its you know perks depending on the channel output that you're on um, but it's not uh, it's not something that I use often uh, it enables you to kind of create these little crazy wacky colors so if you're doing some kind of illustration or something you wanted to add in some really cool fur textures or colors you can do that with uh, the channel mixer um, <coughs> deleted too much so I'll hit uh, control Z to bring back that and then we will move on to the next one um, color lookup I don't use color lookup at all it's very similar to what the um, photo filter does you can add kind of a filter color over the top of something so say you want it to be filtered with this horror blue it's going to add this little blue filter over the top of our image. Um, it's cool if you're a photographer and you use color lookup and you can get different presets and things that are made for it. Uh, but for what we do or what I do, I don't. Uh, I don't see any use for the color lookup. Um, invert does exactly that. There are no properties of it. It literally will invert. We can create the clipping mask. The colors from what they were, you know, black to white. Uh, the orange. Uh, yellowish color to blue so it's just going to invert whatever colors they are based on uh, the color spectrum the color wheel uh, that one's the most straightforward one because there's no options inside of it for you uh, posterize posterize is going to be hard to tell on this image but essentially when you click it it kind of makes things look like a, a poster so it, it breaks it down it defines those edges um, <coughs> this is something that you we will learn a little bit more in when we go into the filter section of uh, our tutorial tutorials um, it's I like to use this up in the filter gallery rather than here as an adjustment layer but it's something that um, can give you a pretty cool effect um, threshold uh, I don't really mess with threshold at all I guess you can set whatever your threshold level is and um, it, it's going to make things I guess black and white and then the, the higher threshold you go it's going to show more of those um, pixels and lines and whatnot <coughs> and the less <coughs> excuse me the less you go you'll get uh, less of those uh, I don't use this often then you have gradient map 
gradient map is kind of cool. Um, it's going to be a little hard to tell in this image um, how it works, but essentially what the gradient map does, when you click it, it's going to open up this and it set a gradient over the top of it. So based on the colors that we had, we're black and white because those are our base colors over here. With the gradient map, you can pinpoint um, what color you want the black tones to be and then what color you want the white tones to be and then anything else in the middle will change and modify. So say we wanted the gray tones to be a red color and we wanted all of the uh, lighter gray tones to be a pink color. It allows you to change and modify and then if you drag this around you can see that it will change those as well. You can add in a million different colors in here to change these tones to whatever you want it to and it's only going to color map those colors that fall into that section of the uh, the tones so the shadows to the light tones so whatever color you have so we have our, our really light tones on the edge because that edge was faded out you can see right around the edge it's, it's kind of fading out to nothingness so it's closer to the whites um, so gradient map is really cool it's really good for coloring brushes a lot of times it's hard when you, when you have a brush and you stamp it it's just one color or a tone of black and white um, or it's a tone of whatever color you have gradient map allows you to kind of map out the colors to change a brush and we'll go over that a little bit more in detail in another video and then we have um, the last thing is going to be uh, selective color uh, so let's go ahead and uh, delete too many deletes while well, undo control Z um, <coughs> with selective color um, a selective color is going to let you um, select you know that color and modify it so right now we're selecting uh, reds and then we can plus and minus uh, like the black inside the reds to darken them up a little bit um, yellow um, we can change those so it's going to change it to uh, a little bit more of a red tone um, and then you can select the colors in here so say we wanted to select blacks we want the blacks to be less black we can remove those uh, it's not something that I use a whole lot if you want to make the blacks a little bit more black um, or you wanted to make the blacks you know, have these these off colors. Um, <clears throat> those are all options that you can do. I don't use this uh, adjustment layer very much, um, if at all, really. So that, in a nutshell, uh, very basic, as quick as I can, overview of the adjustment layers. The number one takeaway from this video is hue and saturation is your best friend especially for doing quick designs being able to put designs out there fast changing the color something so when you have variations people say oh, I want a red one or a pink one or a blue one of this design <coughs> using hue and saturation is going to help you achieve that the fastest way possible alright so I believe that is it for the uh, layers panel and for pretty much Photoshop uh, 101 basics, um, we, we went over all of the uh, toolbar here and how the layers panel works. And then um, everything else uh, in that aspect is, uh, is kind of a wrap. Uh, we will kind of dive into a little bit more um, specific things now. Uh, so if there's any videos or anything that you want me to touch on or cover or something you want to know how to do or how to make, um, just let me know and uh, we'll get those videos going.